start with, uh, with you, uh, Damian. Can you introduce a little bit of, uh, of you, what uh, you've been doing, uh, what you are up to, and the experience that you gained uh, on Navident so far? Yes, well, uh, I have found Navident uh, about two years ago um, during the IDS in Cologne. Uh, during that time, I have researched about uh, similar systems, but uh, uh, through my research, I ended up with the conclusion that uh, I should uh, continue with Navident. So, in Monaco, we saw each other, and uh, we agreed to work together. So, uh, from July, from the end of July, I think, when um, Tom Tillmans came to visit me, I have several cases until now. Wait a minute. How many cases? Uh, how many cases did you had? Until now, four. Four cases. Uh, they were, I think, simple cases. Three of them are with uh, single implants, and one of them is with a uh, uh, bridge over three implants. Okay. Good. Uh, all of them were on lower jaw, and. Uh, the thing which is, and I think which will be a little bit difficult for the doctors, is to know where to position their patient in order for the system to keep tracking on the markers, on the jaw tuck and on the drill tuck. So maybe the most difficult I find the third quadrant or the lower left quadrant. Uh, I'll share my experience, and after this, I'll ask you uh, what's your vision about this. Uh, on this quadrant, to lower left, I think the most appropriate position for the system is to be uh, at 12 o'clock behind the patient's head, and the patient should be, uh, should lay down, should be horizontal. So. Uh, in this position, the camera keeps tracking a good tracking of the jaw tuck as well as the drill tuck. Uh, lower right is uh, not a thing that uh, is difficult, but left when there are uh, natural teeth or, uh, or if there are teeth uh, in the lower right region, the hand piece cannot go until the end. So it's an obstacle if we try to work from this side with the implants in the lower left region. That's why the patient should be horizontal and we should work from the other side. I think. What is your opinion about the position when we work on the lower left region with Navident? According to me, you don't have to change uh, the position, but, uh, but uh, you have to use uh, the drills of a different length. So you can start with uh, a drill uh, uh, that is smaller, and then uh, you have to continue the surgery with uh, a drill uh, that is longer. The this is an option, yes. But if you do so, you can uh, maintain the same position during the surgery in all quadrants. But uh, it is important to have different uh, uh, length of the, the drills. Yes, uh, I have tried this. I have tried the different length. Uh, nevertheless, when uh, there is not enough opening of the mouth and uh, if you have made uh, the drilling at for exactly minus three millimeters from the end point and you have to insert the longer drill, it's a little bit difficult from this side. Yes, but um, if you use uh, 
the drill, uh, what you want, what I want to tell you is uh, that it's important to have uh, several uh, um, length of the drills. In this way, um, it is possible to, uh, with a learning, a just a little learning curve, to uh, find the right uh, steps to, to, to go at uh, the program, the length of the implant. Uh, you don't have to use the elongation of the drill, but you have to use a different drill length without the elongation of the drill. Okay. Uh, what about the upper left quadrant? Uh, what position do you suggest will be most comfortable for the for my colleagues and for me? Upper left. Upper left. Uh, according to me, the you the, the patient has to be horizontal. And uh, where is your position and navident position? Allora, the navident position is uh, at uh, seven, at uh, seven hour, no? In front of me, and my position uh, at uh, twelve time. Mm -hmm. uh, is this your general position during the photo? You can see the photo. Uh, we put yes, I see it. This is the, you see when uh, with my, okay, this is the position for the second quadrant. Mm, okay. Uh, do you use this position in general for all quadrants and all cases? Mm, for uh, the other quadrants, uh, yeah, I prefer also to have a look at the, the patients. So, I, the, the, the navident position is the same, but uh, I move uh, at uh, nine time, at uh, nine time, as position. Nine, nine, nine o'clock. Nine hour, nine hour. Okay, and the navident, is it behind the patient? Or? The navident is uh, at uh, seven hour. Uh, and uh, how do you manage to look at the navident and the... Uh, Seven, 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 seven in front of you, no? You are at uh, nine hour and the navident is uh, uh, beside the leg of the patient. Aha, from the other side? Yes. No, no. no on, the, on the right side. On the right side. On the right side. It's a uh, lane on, on the chair. In the chair. Okay, and I saw. On the right side of the patient. Seven hours. Okay. But the, the, screen, the screen is uh, sulla pancia del paziente. On the belly. On the patient belly. I see. Uh, okay. Do you prefer uh, you yourself to hold the navy stand and the jaw tuck during drilling? Or uh, do you suggest that the assistant does it? No, 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 I, no, no, so basically uh, Luigi doesn't hold Navi stent, Navi stent should stay put on patient's mouth, so nobody should uh, touch the Navi stent while operating. In some cases, the uh, cheeks and the lips push out the Navi stent. Before to do the surgery, I want to be sure that the navi stent is uh, anchored to the to the teeth. So if uh, it's not, uh, it is not uh, well anchored, I do not proceed with the surgery. Uh, in this case, I prefer to rebase the navi stent with uh, fixment. Eh? fixment. With the fixodent or uh, splint line. Okay. And then I make the CT and then the surgery. 
because the, the most important thing is the position of the navy step that uh, it could be very anchored to the tip i see okay um another question when do you uh first do you record all your sessions with navident maybe before i recorded uh, all the the surgeries now no because uh, i noted that uh, no one of my uh, recorded surgery is uh, i have cioè, i have uh, not seen one of the, the my recorded the surgery so now i uh, you don't prefer. I don't record the, the, the surgery. Okay, uh, I have noticed that if I record the surgery uh, on the screen, after this, the video file is turned opposite. Yes. yes. Uh, have you seen this? Yes, yes, it's opposite. Yes. Because it's the way uh, how to work, no? In the opposite side. When, when you work, you have the vision as you work. So the, the right is on the left in the yes. large, and the left is on the right. But is uh, as you have uh, a direct vision, no? Okay, I'm asking because uh, now I'm preparing a movie for the presentation about Navident, and uh, this is an issue which I was interesting interested about. Uh, okay, and. Uh, for the recalibration uh, of the tags, of the jaw tag, the drill tag, uh, you do this only in the beginning, or if you see, uh, if accidentally the jaw tag moves, do you recalibrate again, or you know that you have calibrated it already? No, I recalibrate the drill each time. No, not the drill, but the drill tag and the drill tag. No, no, the drill tag. I recalibrate the drill tag each time because... Uh, um, and uh, I uh, go to uh, touch the landmark each time to be sure that uh, the procedure is correct. And uh, when I work in the lower arch, I use also the stop of the drill. Because uh, it is important uh, um, to have a natural stop. Because if sometimes you forgot to uh, calibrate the drill and change the drill, you go uh, and then you make some damage to, to the passion. Yes. So you suggest you suggest that every time we should use our stoppers, no matter what. In the, the lower arch, yes. In the upper arch, it's not important. But in the lower arch, it's important. Uh, I, I suggest see. also in the lower arch to uh, after you pass the pilot drill to reduce the number of the spins. So you can go slowly to the final uh, point. I see. Uh, okay. Well, these were my main questions. Yes. Uh, I can uh, talking about uh, navy stent manufacturing. Huh? What I've noticed working with colleagues uh, like you and, uh, and Luigi. I noticed that it's essential to wait time. Yes. So instead of being uh, in a hurry and therefore holding uh, the retainer and after you know few seconds remove it, it's essential to keep it on the patient mouth until at least one minute. Yes. Oh, I keep it. I keep it for at least one minute. Search to search each time the undercuts of the, the teeth. Uh, it's important. And if in, you are not sure that is anchored, you have to rebase it with the split line or uh, uh, I don't know which resin do you use, but uh, uh, 
string line or a check kit is the same. Okay, sprint line. Uh, have you tried to mold a white cured um, stent? So, I mean, light curing is not necessary. No, no, not necessary. Light curing is not necessary. You, ju you just wait uh, and, uh, and basically you mold uh, on the arch, looking at the undercut, as much as uh, Luigi was saying. And, uh, and another thing which might be useful, yes. if you ask the patient to close when, the when, when is the time, uh, just the time to, to remove, uh, you can tell to the patient to close the mouth so you can have, and swallow. Eh? And swallow. And swallow. So you can have a, a little impression of the optocyte arch to the retainer and then you have a stable position during the CT. I see. Okay. Uh, about the... Yes, yes. Tell, tell. About the totally dangerous uh, patients, uh, Tom told me that uh, he'll send me a pro he can uh, arrange to send me maybe a prototype because I have several patients that uh, I intend to use Navident and uh, it's a very interesting idea because uh, at Sofia Dental Meeting we discussed a lot of uh, navigation systems and uh, and uh, digital workflow and uh, the conclusion is that the bone supported surgical guides are better than uh, soft tissue supported so uh, but, uh, we, the prototype looks very we, promising we used uh, the new protocol and uh, I'll, I'll read you my, my results so we made uh, uh, we made 13 cases of edentulism and uh, the error, the angular error, the deviation of the total edentulism was 2.75 degree for the angular deviation, 0.82 for the coronal deviation and 1.83 for the apical deviation. The total of the implant inserted in the edentulism was 61 and these are the results. Mm -hmm. That not are so bad, no? Yes, yes. All flapless. Great. But Three or four times I needed to, to erase a small flap because of the mobile mucosa. Mm -hmm. Damiana, Damiana, if you go, I click here, uh, I show you this video and you can see, if you go to YouTube yes. and you uh, type Navident, you mm -hmm. can see the channel uh, of mine, Luca Casalena. And you will see uh, I a few videos, and one video, it's a total edentulo treated with Navident, with a post-op Panorex. Mm -hmm. uh, we posted uh, um, almost three weeks ago, and uh, that video illustrates pretty well the protocol that uh, Luigi is following uh, for the total edentulo cases. Okay, because uh, this will be one of the main questions when uh, we present the system on the 13th of November because everybody is talking okay leave the simple cases what about the totally dangerous cases and for now I didn't have an answer yeah but basically if you go uh, to that video you will see that Luigi is using a, a, a protocol which is a uniquely designed uh, to tackle totally dangerous cases uh, patients which uses basically a, a mining implant. So the idea is to use a mining implant on the center of the arch and on top of that implant to really fix the, the arm in a fixed plane. I have seen, I have seen the documentation about this. It looks promising. 
I am waiting to check it out myself. Absolutely. I can tell you that Luigi tried the system and also uh, Professor Dahez in Ghent University has tried uh, the protocol and uh, the, the reports are quite, uh, quite promising. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, okay, one of the main questions. Uh, Luigi, do you work mainly flapless or it depends on the cases maybe? Because my first case when I used Navident uh, with the three implants on the lower jaw, I made a flap, uh, used Navident to place the implants, and uh, then sutured it. Yes. Because I wasn't I wasn't sure about until now I haven't worked flapless. Yes, well, when but when you work uh, flapless. Uh, time something, something wrong goes. I don't know why, but uh, to erase a flap is uh, safer, even if you use a Navident. So, um, it depends uh, on the situation. Uh, depends on the situation, but if you erase a flap, you can be sure that the healing of the patient go well. Because the machine function works, works, and uh, it works good. But even if you insert a, a, an implant in a correct position with flapless uh, uh, surgery, is not the same if you arise a flap. I don't know why. But when you use a flapless surgery, sometimes something wrong goes. I don't know why, but it happens so. Mm -hmm. uh, from time to time, does the flap, uh, is the flap on your way? Uh, does it uh, make it harder to use Navident with a flap or no? Say it again, say it again, the question. Uh, do you find it more difficult to use Navident with a flap? No. Or no? Because I, before I uh, arise a small flap or a flap, and then I put the stent and the retainer and I start the, the surgery. Before mm -hmm. I make the anesthesia and the flap. Then when everything is ready, I put the navi stent and start the surgery. So mm -hmm. I have no problem to erase a flap with the, with the, with the navi stent. Then mm -hmm. I take the, the first drill and then I check, continue with the second drill, have another check and then I finish the work. I see. Okay, well, this, these were my main concerns and the main questions. Uh, as you know, maybe Tom has shared with you the information that uh, we presented the system in front of the faculty of, dental faculty of Plovdiv. Uh, they found it hard to understand the logics of the, the logic of the navigation system and uh, they couldn't uh, imagine how they can use the system and not look in the patient's mouth. The other question was, uh, can we use a flap? I said, of course. Uh, here are cases with a flap and here are cases without a flap. You can work. Uh, how do you want? Uh, but every one of them wanted to see a video of the operation and uh, how is the patient position, my position, what am I doing. So uh, now this is what I'm dealing with these days. I'm filming every important case. Where am I standing? What am I doing? So, uh, sorry. Uh, these were my main questions. Uh, I thank you for the support. Damiana, Damiana, if I can uh, just tell you something about uh, the, um, how it works. I 
can hear. Can you repeat, please? Uh, I want to tell you something regarding uh, the, the way David and Okay. The noise on the background. There's a yes, just a minute. So this is uh, one of the compressors. I know, okay. The, the question is, uh, um, Navident works with a, with, a, with a principle which is uh, very straightforward, which is uh, related to the, to the sight. We do have a 3D sight because we do have two eyes. If we had one eye, we had a 2D vision. While uh, in, the, in the Navident, we do have two cameras capturing information and then superimposing that information on the Combin CT Daikon files. So which is uh, this type of information that is captured by the two cameras? The information is uh, directly linked to the Joe tag and the drill tag. And the Joe tag has the information of the anatomy of the patient because uh, it's positioned on the same level as the city marker you know uh, they, they so because of uh, we 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 flip the 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 Joe tag into uh, the, the city marker we do have the opportunity to capture the anatomy of the patient and the other is uh, the the drill tag which uh, allows the system the software to capture two key information one is the handpiece axis and the second is the working length, the drill working length. Once the two pieces of information, these three pieces of information are, are captured together, and you know the algorithm of the software is capable to superimpose this information on the comb beam. That is the way and the reason why you can navigate uh, the anatomy of the patient. Just another information. You told that someone asked you. Uh, uh, if uh, uh, how you can work uh, not uh, and uh, um, looking at the monitor and not to the patient. I assure you that uh, um, after uh, 20 cases you are able to uh, look at the monitor at, and the patient at the same time. It is just a question of a learning curve. I know, I'm sure of this. Uh, one of the other questions was, what is the viewing angle of the camera? Is this important? Yeah, the, 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 the angle you can uh, detect you, yourself, because you can uh, get close or, or get far with uh, the jaw tag and the drill tag, and you see basically the angle of the camera. But you will see that it's pretty wide. Yes, it's pretty wide. So, but, but uh, um, Closer is the camera, uh, easier is uh, the, the way to proceed. So it's important to have the, the camera closer than you can. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I know that Navident is very promising and this is the future. And that's why we strive to have more and more cases in order to learn to work with it better. Yes. So, uh, if I have any other questions, I will call you again. I will write you. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So, I think we can, uh, we definitely see the this way of communicating as uh, quite effective uh, to exchange ideas and experiences uh, and increase the knowledge on Navident usage. So, feel free to tap on to go to meeting whenever you think it's appropriate for you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And, uh, Next week, uh, I will send you my uh, presentation and the video file of uh, working with Navident in the clinic. Uh, I hope that you like it, guys. Yes.